Dr. Lucy Jones is a seismologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. Dr. Jones, how surprised were scientists by the magnitude of this quake? Well, uh, a mixed bag. Uh, it is a plate boundary. We know these things happen. But this is the largest earthquake in the last 140 years around Japan. And some of the maps had said they thought that that northern part would never have such a large earthquake. Obviously, that's not the case. How does this tsunami compare to the one that struck Thailand and Indonesia back in 2004? This tsunami is a bit smaller than the Indian Ocean tsunami because the earthquake is a bit smaller. I mean, a tsunami happens because you have a massive earthquake on a huge fault that moves a large part of the seafloor up and the water that used to be there has to go somewhere else. Could this type of undersea earthquake happen along the United States coastline? There are two places in the United States where we have a similar type of fault that will also produce a big earthquake and a big tsunami. One is the Aleutian Arc around Alaska, and the other, much more dangerously, is the Pacific Northwest. There's one of these types of faults running all the way from Cape Mendocino in the south to, to the island of Victoria and British Columbia in the north. What can scientists, in your view, hope to learn from this event? Uh, there's, this is going to be the best recorded earthquake ever. The Japanese have spectacular instrumentation, and I think we're going to learn a lot more about the fundamental nature of earthquakes. We're also going to be learning a lot about how buildings behave in these very largest events, and especially the cities of Seattle and Portland should hope that we're looking very, very carefully at just how the Japanese buildings behaved. Dr. Lucy Jones of the U.S. Geological Survey. Dr. Jones, thanks so much.